Please don't take a lot of uh, notes today. We're going to send this presentation to you. And we'll get it out to everyone in the association so you can see the details of what it is we're uh, presenting. But if you've been focused, I've got a new young chocolate laboratory retriever. Her name is Dublin. And I'm constantly saying, Dublin, focus, focus. <laughs> At the same time, you have a new federal legislation, you have new federal funds, we have new state funds for the comptroller in Proposition 1 and Proposition 7, and then we have new population and employment estimates. Last week, we announced we now cross 8 million persons in the Dallas Fort Worth region. 8 million. We're growing at 150,000 persons a year, three years in a row now. We're now growing at a million people every seven years. So think of what we need to do to build the infrastructure for a million people every seven years. So if you were in my shoes, you would probably say it's the year of doing also, uh, because we've got to start building all of these particular projects as fast as we possibly can. Here's those population estimates. For the new mobility plan that is uh, going to the Regional Transportation Council for approval. That 7.7 .7 million in 2020 is now eight uh, in 2022. The 2045 population is 11 million, 11.4 million at this million per seven, eight year pace. Please notice the change in population in Tarrant County, the highest million people are coming to Tarrant County between now and 2045. That's 23 years from now. If you were in our position, would you want as much infilling of that population as you possibly can to save the magnitude of the transportation dollars to respond to that? So this office worked with the city of uh, Textile and the county of uh, We're going to rinse and repeat on Lancaster and we then have to work with partners to infill Fort Worth, infill the central city of Fort Worth, infill the southeast portion of Fort Worth. Why? Residents in southeast Fort Worth, in the inner, in the inner communities in Dallas and Fort Worth, produce half the vehicle miles of travel that a suburban or rural resident has. So it saves us a tremendous amount of money in infrastructure, air quality safety other issues so it may cost us 170 million to do Lancaster but if we have the, de the development impact we think we'll have we're going to save more than 170 million dollars and not have to chase transportation needs all, all the way to the red river here's your employment data 715,000 additional employees in Tarrant County You'll hear from Jeff that we're going to do a job housing balance on Lancaster. What's the distribution of income in Southeast Fort Worth? Therefore, what should be the distribution of housing stock to meet that need so you can live, work, and play in the same community as part of that? You'll also hear, as part of our initiative, that we're going to have nonstop transit service for residents of Lancaster. That guaranteed transit to jobs and alliance as part of the part of the program as well. And yes, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, your request is the distribution of jobs and alliance equal to the needs of the persons in Southeast Fort Worth, and are they good paying jobs in order to make that transit connection? The answer is yes. We go to other things happening in your particular uh, district. But before I do that, we're expecting 200 million more in federal funds due to the new federal transportation legislation. The actual proposition of Proposition 1 and 7, this is what we voted to capture some portion of the excise tax and car sales and energy that comes out of the ground. Both of those numbers two years ago, you could have added close to zero. And look at where energy and car sales have gone in the last two or three years. Our region will get about another 250 million a year of that. Uh, we have a good champion in getting competitive grants and death field. So your project was at the top of the list. Uh, this last week going to Washington. 
Uh, other parts of the state are not building their big projects like our region is, so we call them referrals. 45 is in trouble in Houston, 45 is in trouble in Austin. We're not in trouble on any of our major projects. Why? Because we do a grassroots, bottom up consensus building process. Other the parts of the state don't do that. People say that takes too long to do it. It's actually faster when you engage people at the grassroots level to help shape what is the project that's important to their particular community. What happens when you do all this? You get to shoehorn in Lancaster and an extension of rail into the hospital district. What was recently funded? Two major efforts of uh, urban design on our freeways. First one, north and west of you, downtown Fort Worth, the new Panther Island, which is gonna get water, the near north side, how we're gonna get enough transportation so you don't go around the courthouse twice trying to get to the new Panther Island. Someone on the transportation side needs to think about that. That's us. Butler Housing, as you know, has done a full housing solutions done a great job of integrating everyone into the neighborhood. That land becomes available up to where the schools are. Uh, how can we build tall buildings and do something wonderful for the full world? And then how do you advance, as Kelly reminds us, into the southern gateway of 35W? And you'll see where we're doing that on one section of uh, Lancaster here in a moment. A closer home, we're going to do the same context urban design working with textile on I-30. I-30 is the home of our high-speed rail, Fort Worth, Arlington, Dallas, Houston. We're now moving into the environmental phase of that particular project. I-30 to your north, where we are, but in your business community, is going to be totally rebuilt. So that gets bigger, maybe Lancaster can get smaller. We're going to toggle moving regional trips to the new freeway, shorter trips to the new Lancaster. That is an important conversation when we talk to textile and the commission as they see us work in a system, which they have a bigger for longer trips, Lancaster no longer having to be the road to California like you were back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. So you're moving from 90% throughput, 10% access, to maybe 20% throughput, 80% access. And as a result, you have a very di different looking Lancaster as a result of that. Um, we also have managed lanes on Interstate 30. So again, when we build 30 bigger, working with you and others, and maybe Lancaster could be correctly sized for what you wish your vision had to be. Here's a picture of the high speed rail options. We started with uh, 60, we're down to two or three. All of them are in the Interstate 30 border. That EIS is beginning as well, parallel to this particular effort. Our office will be the EIS on high speed rail. Carlos team will bring in the geometric consultants in July 30. And as you'll hear, Carlos will bring the geometric EIS consultants into Lancaster. Lancaster is owned by Textile, even though you may think Lancaster is owned by Fort Worth. I want to quickly go through this. <coughs> I want you to know Lancaster. Is, is on its way to Washington, D.C. as the first example of equal access to the internet as a transportation mode. Um, it said under Title 23 and 29, equal access to the internet, the internet is an important transportation mode as thoroughfare streets or transit. Well, Michael, why do you say that? The internet provides travel demand substitution. I do not have to travel when I use the internet. Air quality benefits. I can get mobility benefits. I can access uh, the technology if I'm in need. What would my needs potentially be? I may not own a vehicle. I may not have access to transit. I may not have safe bike routes and sidewalks, which is going to change here in a moment. I may have lower income can't afford those transportation modes. I may be older, I may be disabled. So we are sending to Washington for the first time, equal access to the internet is actually a transportation mode. And it's a transportation mode 
then we're funding bringing equal access to the internet on Lancaster as part of our project. Then retrofit Rosedale. So Rosedale will be the retrofit. A new utility ball for the Ricardo, whatever goes to the deeper text dock. We put fiber into Lancaster, pop the fiber out, not just for transportation purposes, like next generation traffic signals, like dynamic message signs, like scheduling information for transit people, but actually turn it into people's homes, integrate into the infrastructure and land base. We anticipate to be turned out at the division level here in Texas, which will get us a plane ticket to Washington, and we're going to take the, the, the heart and soul of Lancaster with us to Washington for Lancaster to be the first uh, use of equal access to the internet, but that's part of this project. Here is um, here is that presentation that we gave to the board. Uh, we're using autonomous vehicles to demonstrate in Dallas broadband in Fort Worth uh, as part of this uh, initiative, and that was approved probably two or three months ago. Three other things we're funding. We're slowly focusing in on Lancaster. Brought to my attention, zip code 76104. Which you probably know, I was introduced as the poorest zip code in the state of Texas. So the Regional Transportation Council funded 300,000 in planning funds, later funded 700,000 in transit service. That zip code, Shannon's team will now move forward with a million dollar program within that zip code to provide better accessibility on transit. The residents in 76104, which is on the west side of Lancaster on the south side of downtown. Um, the next uh, item is your internet item that we talked about. You, you notice here that Rosedale is the retrofit example, because we just rebuilt Rosedale. And then Lancaster will catch new. So they need utility back, test those legal requirements. And text us right away as part of that. We'll carry that water for Ricardo as he's busy uh, listening to your, your design elements from Carla on what to put into the particular project. And then we're working on next generation emergency vehicles. I'm holding a meeting with the police and fire in Dallas and the police and fire in Fort Worth and traffic engineering in Dallas and traffic engineering in Fort Worth. We're implementing to the hospital districts of both communities at the same time, next generation traffic signals. So when those ambulances or first responders go into the emergency room, once they leave that freeway, once the ambulance, once the signals know that light is on, it's a designated vehicle, it knows what route it's going to to the emergency rooms, will automatically move all the cars out of the way, turn the lights green, minimize the travel time of the emergency vehicles to those emergency <laughs> entrances. Right. Why is that so cool? Because we're going to take that same technology and we're going to put our transit vehicles and Lancaster will be the first smart transit corridor where the bus driver comes in eight seconds before that bus is fully loaded, bus driver hits a button, signals turn green, Cars get out of the bus and play. GPS is on the bus, knows where it's supposed to go. Green lights turn green for the bus to have no congestion to get to the next bus stop. And then we start using our artificial intelligence on the loading times, what times a day, which automatically synchronize the traffic signals. So the emergency vehicle initiative that is good, a good government position anyway, now is the foundation for what we're going to do on phase two transit service in DART and phase two transit service in Trinity Metro. Technology here is your friend if you're using technology to solve the problem. If you're chasing technology for the second technology, then you're, you're just not working on the public interest of what it is you wish to do. Carl had a project on Rosedale. You've all seen it. It's just south of Texas Wesleyan. The older buildings were there. We funded a sustainable development project to clean up the sidewalk, the streets, the light, and the crosswalk. 
created an opportunity for the private sector to go in and lease those buildings on the south side of Texas West End. We then built the Rosedale project in partnership with the city and the county of Textile from 287 all the way to 820. I think it had some impact on Texas Wesleyan shaping up the campus. I go back there now with more pride than I did previous to our Rosedale project. And we're slowly getting lots of more development interest in the Rosedale project. And obviously, yes, we're doing Lancaster as a transportation project, but obviously we're doing it as an economic development tool. Back to my thesis that I think we feel in a more efficient method. So Carla, thank you for that project. And this is the type of things Carla will be turning to Lancaster. So Lancaster 2.0, that's our name. You may or may not like it. <laughs> you your own name. We're not taking our money. We're not going to take our hundred seventy million dollars back if you don't like our Lancaster. <laughs> you know. But we're going from thirty-five W in uh, the south of downtown, all the way to Green Oaks, which is your eastern city limits. I'm calling them one A, one B, and one C because they're not phase one, phase two, phase three. They're all the same phase, but they're very different in, in design. 35 to Pine, that's the four lane section. Pine to 820, you'll hear more. That's the item we submitted for uh, money to Washington. And then once you get it outside 820, if you're still equally interested in it, it may look it may look different than what happens between 287 and 820. What are some of the elements we want to be sensitive to in the public policy or transportation? In 1A, we need some direction for social services. We're not the experts on how best to do that. We'll lean on Kelly on how and direction we get from 35 to Pine. 287 is a, a great use to us if we can move people along Lancaster and then up to 287. So we're going to take advantage of 287. And then don't forget our parallel interstate 30 improvements. 30 gets bigger. We have a potential of going to a four or six lane. Lancaster, part of our defense, the textile will be, but we just added more capacity to 30, therefore we don't need as much on Lancaster. If the community wants six lanes, I'm, I'm happy with six lanes. I'm just trying to give as much flexibility to what the community may need. And then of course, 820 helps us, and so does Green Oaks help us, and we work on the 820 to Green Oaks section uh, of Lancaster. I wanted to cover sort of the fence post, the, the bigger East Fort Worth Business Association fence post of what was recently funded. And then other than her interest in Mexican Indian food, uh, Carl actually is our sustainable development context sensitive design person. So she'll walk me through that part of that chapter we'll talk about the money. We don't have too much more to go, but the important part is still to go. Uh, and then we'll uh, look at next steps and uh, take any questions. As Michael said, my name is Carla Windsor. Uh, I manage our sustainable development program. Did I say Weaver? You did, you just said Carla. Oh. So I've been Carla Weaver for 15 years in my career cog, and the last six months I've been Carla Windsor. So I often forget to call myself by the correct name. So. Um, I manage our sustainable development program. We look at context sensitive design, economic development, parking. Sometimes there's too much, sometimes it's not enough. Um, we look at active transportation, bicycle and pedestrian planning. Um, we have programs to work with school districts on siting schools as they're coming online and then retrofitting schools that have safety issues or concerns or accessibility issues. Um, when we look at a project or a candidate corridor like Lancaster, we're all about layering. We're all about, Michael likes to call them ornaments on the tree. When you look from the federal perspective, you're competing with projects all across the country. You want to set yourself apart on what are all of the different elements, all of the wins that you get a project like this to advance this. Um, I apologize, this is very difficult to read today. This presentation will be sent out, but I'm going to go through sort of all of the different elements that we look to layer on projects like this that sort of interconnect. Some of them may be more important than others. It's very context sensitive. It's very specific to a corridor. It's not going to look the same on a street in Denton or a street in Arlington or even a different, different part of Fort Worth. They're all very unique. 
Um, you may start with a corridor that has an issue with the roadway flooding. Um, that's, a, that's something we need to fix, but it opens up opportunities to touch a lot of other elements of the corridor. Um, a safe street national pilot, that's what we're looking for. So we want something that's technology driven. We want something that feels safe for all modes and all users. We're all about being a region of choice. So whether you want to drive, you want to take transit, you want to walk, you want to ride your bicycle, they should all be as easy and as accessible to you anywhere you want to go within your community. So a corridor that can provide that is really what we're trying to structure. Um, next generation transit and traffic signals. So Michael already spoke to that. Those, of course, have to be part of this technology and of the context. Um, transit benefit rewards. We want to make sure, um, we want to work with Trinity Metro to make sure that there is easy accessibility to transit, but also benefits to taking transit. Maybe there's passes that lots of trips, short trips, um, maybe those are rewarded and there are benefits to reduce, reduce fares. Um, there's a whole lot of ways that can be structured. Um, guaranteed transit to alliance, Michael already mentioned, if there are people living in the corridor that want to go to jobs in that area, or there are people in that area that want to come to businesses that are here, how do we make that very accessible? Broadband is also another technology element. Um, as I-30 gets bigger, of course, Lancaster is smaller, which opens up to these neighborhood small business growth and developments unique places whether it's restaurant whether it's retail um it's important for all of this though we're very cognizant of historic sensitivity um you don't want every place to look exactly like every other place there's a historic culture here there is those that have come before and we have at the regional transportation council my team develops a gentrification and anti-gentrification policy so we want to be very mindful of new growth and new development the development pressures that will come and so making sure that people aren't displaced that the right public tools are in place to help protect homes protect those who are aging in place um, there's a whole menu of options that we run for communities on in that area and then the infamous can you live here but can you work here can you connect jobs here and then can you do life here whether it's movie theaters or whether it's restaurant spaces or outdoor spaces and all of those things is it a good place for families and kids? So thinking through all of those really starts developing the context. So this is an example of the cross section that we submitted in the federal grant. It's a concept. Um, it's a conversation that happens with community. It's a plug and play sort of um, what really fits this area. So the sidewalks, how wide they need to be. The bicycle facilities, maybe we don't want them on the street. Maybe they have to come off and there's separation so that we feel safer and we have 12 foot and we have distance between vehicles. Um, this is just a standard bus shelter here, but we floated the idea that we need um, a better concept to that, um, a, a pull in, pull out. Is there an opportunity for business to develop where people are waiting? Are there smart shelters? Is there digital technology to communicate to people when buses are coming? Um, is there a place you can go inside and AC and charge up your phone and check your email and grab a code? You know, there's a whole different concept that can be explored to use the space. Um, it's a conversation that you have thinking through the different needs for the city, for Trinity Metro, for residents, for businesses, leasing out spaces, creating job revenue streams, you know, really sky's the limit when you think through that brainstorming process. Um, Trinity Metro partnering with the Federal Transit Administration and the city has already started thinking about the economics, thinking about some of the design issues. Those will continue to be vetted as the dollars and resources are in place for Lancaster. We worked with the city many years on a lot of different projects. We recently funded in 2018 the Fort Worth Active Transportation Plan. You may or may not be familiar. So Fort Worth already had a walk Fort Worth and they had a bike Fort Worth. Um, those plans were outdated, so we funded updates to those, but the city didn't have a trails plan and they didn't have an access to transit plan. So we said, let's put them all in one place. Let's overlay those plans. Let's get everybody updated. And this will help the city prioritize areas where there's safety concerns, or areas around schools, or areas where there's large transit demand, or areas where there's lots of green space and parks, and lots of families are trying to connect to those areas. So that's a great document, and documents like that are used as the base to sort of create the vision for corridors like Lancaster. And then finally, it's not just the full build out of a vision like this. We have programs that help with needs that are immediate from all aspects of the city. Uh, my program, uh, Sustainable Development, we manage what's called our Transportation Alternative Program. So we're about to have a call for projects, is what we call it, a funding initiative that will open up this summer. 
40 to 50 million dollars that will be available to local governments, school districts, the counties and transit agencies, and it'll fund sidewalks and bike trails and safe routes to schools and safety intersection projects and a whole host of uh, technology safety uh, can be in there. So, you know, while we're waiting for these larger visions to happen and those places, those pieces are going to be put in place, there may be smaller impact projects that you need within your community. We would encourage you to work with the city to help prioritize those and get those applications into us. Our application process will open July 18th and it will close September 9th. So we hope that you've got a lot of great projects um, in here in Fort Worth. This is always a part of the, the region actually where we don't get as many projects as we do on the Dallas side or the Denton side. I know that you guys can match that you have needs. So we're looking forward to those and so those safety things can happen within your community. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff, and he is going to give you a little bit more detail about sort of what the federal grant is looking for when it comes to job creation, it's looking for equity, um, and then sort of the broader funding packages that this fits into. Good afternoon, everyone. So you've heard us talk a great deal about various components whether it's transportation, whether it's its connection to various other functions, layers as, as, we, as we had called them. But it's really within these federal uh, grant programs where you really have to understand and document and tell the story about how all of these items then combine to address these important uh, merit criteria. Everything ranging from job creation, economic development to uh, multimodal options improve quality of life, equity. How does a new project like this impact climate change, sustainability? How does it impact uh, uh, a lot of other different factors? And so this particular grant program, which is called the Multimodal Projects Discretionary Grant Program, this was the one that was submitted for East Lancaster, is actually one of about 20 different grant programs out of the new infrastructure law that metropolitan planning organizations and local governments are eligible to apply for. And, and because it's important to ensure that you've got these robust, critical transportation connections to all of these other different facets of life, it's really here where all of these aspects then come together. And of course, that's how we get the money, that's how we establish the new overall vision, and, and I, should have, I should make sure that you know, I am a senior program manager for our streamlined project delivery team. So in a year of doing, there's a, there's a lot of writing on it, right? And it's these programs that, that allow us the opportunity to be able to go and try to get that, the funding uh, that we're hoping to accomplish. So safety, uh, a brand new roadway with improved intersections, with, with technology-based uh, uh, signal timing, uh, being able to being able to preempt signals for emergency vehicles for transit vehicles, and the fact that we have a regional pedestrian safety action plan that indicates Lancaster as a primary corridor in need of improvement, we're showing again as we do in many of these cases connections to plans, connections to activities that have gone back years, decades in the making, showing how this vision has come together through the result of collaborative uh, uh, grass, uh, grassroots uh, activities uh, to generate this vision. State of good repair, it's a brand new, you know, trying to get a brand new facility out of it. Innovation, we talk about, we mentioned technology. We're also wanting to make sure that even in the construction process itself, we're trying to generate um, a means of saving money, saving time, more accountability by, by allowing uh, Technology doing visual inspections. And, and through that, we're able to get more people, more businesses, particularly more those that are disadvantaged, to be able to perform construction activities. So it's again more, more outside of just the transportation realm that we're dealing with here. But all of these different aspects that come together in this particular application that was sent that was made possible through a partnership with Trinity Metro, City of Fort Worth, and Textile that not only involve East Lancaster, but a number of different projects. We identified a need to be able to, that we could replace federal funds that were on a development called Katie Laws. 
It then allowed us to ensure that we had ability for other federal funds to come in, other local funds to come in and help fulfill getting the text rail extension to the hospital district. That's been long awaited for some time. And then, of course, additional federal funding for the new station along the Train Railway Express, the Train Lake Station, which will be extremely good for the area, as well as, of course, then uh, guaranteed transit, which establishes that. East Lancaster to Alliance connection. All of that really then facilitated the ability for us to be able to submit this application uh, for the MPDG program. And so you can see here a total $182 million project uh, using the $100 million request out of this program, combined with the $10 million from the bond program from the city of Fort Worth and TechSoc funds. And this enables us to then generate the overall improvement package that we've been discussing here today for the Lancaster Fund. We hope to find out, <clears throat> hopefully as soon as August or September, whether or not this project is, becomes a recipient of these funds. If it doesn't, we're going to try again. There are certainly many grant opportunities. I mentioned 20. Right? There are a number of those programs in which East Lancaster is very compatible. And so we're going to look for all opportunities try to get this project across the goal line uh, through this process. So I will go ahead at this point and uh, turn it back over to Michael. If there are any comments or questions we can forward to you. Thank you. Well, Jeff, if we go back just one page, just to underscore, what the RTC did was able to fund the first two, work on the first two, Four and five, get those fully funded. So they're on their own path. That freed up the Lancaster. You have forty million dollars already in the bank. We don't want to sit in the bank. We want to put it to use. The Carl's going to get money to do the engineering and design. He's either going to go get his own money or his welcome to our forty million, whichever is the best way for Textile to proceed. And then we're sitting now with thirty million. That textile will match with our federal funds, which comes with our federal funds. You guys will decide what you want to do with the bond program. So we're sitting on a hundred million dollar ask right now in Washington. So what's going to happen is, if we're successful, we're fully funded. If we're not, you'll see the RTC add money to the forty million. Let's say thirty. Now we have seventy million in the bank, and then we go after seventy in the next call, and then we'll. Remember, I can't go to construction tomorrow. We got we got two or three years of design, uh, utilities, and consensus building. So I don't need it fully funded today. The more you can help create the vision, then the picture we send isn't a generic picture not knowing. It's closer to what the real vision is. And I think we're good at what we're doing. We may win now. We're, we're right under the wire to getting this money and have it be able to go to construction. The firm is a hair nervous because he's he'd be on the clock to turn this around pretty quickly before we lose the money that we're um, But as we tighten up this picture, get more community support, we got whatever support we got. Can you imagine a year from now on a couple hundred letters of support we're going to have? That, that vision will be that much clearer. So we are going to iterate our funding programs so we're 100% funded. And if we're not 100% funded, when we're currently ready to go to construction, let's go ahead and take whatever that difference is to make sure the project doesn't get held up. Now, that part, please don't pass on, because the federal agencies just say, well, they're going to fund it three years anyway. Why should I fund it? So you heard me say, Damn it, I'm not funding it. If the federal <laughs> government doesn't fund it. Okay? You heard me, Michael said, damn it, I'm not funding it. Sorry, darn it. He said it twice. Darn it. <laughs> darn it. I'm not funding another nickel unless the federal government gets it for the right. Okay, next steps. This is our last slide. It's important for you. In the broader community, because this isn't just your association, the federal law, 
come to equal access to give us their vision. People who like us and people who don't like us. We need your participation now. So what that means is we're going to send you the presentation. We're going to say, look, this is exciting. Get ready for uh, rolling up your sleeves. Uh, public meetings are going to occur. As Carl already said, public meetings have started with regard to the kinds of discussion. Jack Stott and us in Fort Worth are going to broader discussion. We're probably, well, Ricardo Rome and gets an engineer. We're probably going to have our own set of meetings this summer, early fall, start laying out this so the whole community knows what's coming, start having our own workshops with regard to visioning, and let others, like the engineers and others, catch up to what it is uh, we're going to do. Ricardo, I invited for lunch. He probably, Robert, likes your lunch as well. Uh, if he knew he was going to be here. Since his office is going to take the lead on hiring the engineering firm to design and environment clear the project, I wanted Ricardo to at least get a free lunch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He'll tell me if he needs money or not, but either way, we're moving ahead on the procurement process uh, through his office. Kelly is our liaison to Fort Worth on all things that you saw today. So Kelly's fingerprints are on this vision as well, not just on my desk, but on other parts. So we'll hear from what Kelly is doing with Trinity Metro with regard to transit. And then we'll be bringing to Kelly a grassroots effort. I have three regional transportation council members and the Fort Worth Council. I, I need to engage with them on how their advice is in us reaching out. But I want to go to the tech stop, city, Fort Worth, potentially county uh, effort. We're going to manage the transportation consensus. This is the last time we're going to go through a consensus building process on my test. I'm not delegating it to anyone else to, to do it. I want a grassroots process. You guys created it, but I'm, we're not leaving the table because this is the last time. It's the, it's the thing you're doing, consensus process, whatever it will be, and it's going to get engineered, it's going to get cleared. And have a public hearing, it's going to get fully funded, it's going to be implemented. And it's going to have maybe for the first time in federal government history, equal access to the internet as an element of a construction project as part of a broader, more adult conversation with regard to how transportation impacts our, our lives. And then we'll be working with the first emergency vehicles. Uh, it's a little tighter group. And then we'll be bringing that technology to the transportation authorities to uh, advance uh, technology uh, using transit. Uh, so my hope is to have these portico stations on the curb. We're sitting there with a, like right here, next class is six minutes. I'm finishing up my coffee, charging my phone, I'm in air conditioning. I use the restroom for the business owners. Those business owners or grassroots business owners that come to the community. Could be a craft beer place here, could be a coffee shop here, a craft beer here. The next station may be a completely different set of employers. You in the business community need to help create that vision, that historical awareness. Hey, okay, you're at such and such street. This is always known as the such and such business. And then my dream is to. Totally radically change how transit is paid for from a user standpoint. A person who takes transit every day, which is a user of this quarter, the highest transit user of this quarter, why aren't they, why aren't they getting the reward programs? Why, why are they paying the same amount as the person that uses it once a year to go to a hockey game at American Airlines? That person who's subsidizing the business, you know, Marriott gives you points. I'm going to bring points and I'm going to bring it to the Lancaster Quarter. And then you're going to trade your points in for either lower fares or free coffee or, and a, maybe, maybe engaging in these same businesses that are at our quarter to the transit station. Okay, so you're all here for the day that one, that the broader conversation that we brought to you in your East Fort Worth Business Association. Because we're touching about a dozen things with funding since last time we saw you. But this is the last, the last dance, last train 
in Lancaster. Get on pretty soon. <laughs> and uh, want to thank you very much for having me today. Thank you for talking about today. You can, you can actually bring about what a lot of us have been concerned about for a long time. That is economic development in this part of it. And the thing you talk about the lights are sort of our main street. You can make that happen. And so I think we're all excited about the budget. So I just want to thank you for the focus. Make it happen. Saying that it's going to happen, even though you're not going to budget it. <laughs> and, and one thing we need to all remember, even though you can't stay at weekend, that is go out and vote for the you know, for the ten million dollars and, and the other ones as well. Yeah, there's a point where the adults in the room finally have to take over. And what why we brought five members of our team today. I'm not trying to be critical of anyone else. The adults in the room are taking over. And we're carrying the we're going to be carrying the torch. And I'm not going to say it's always going to be nice. There's going to be some detractors that are going to be left behind because they maybe don't have the same spirit to these. It's hard. This, this is a complicated set of ornaments we're bringing here, but it's the complicated set of ornaments that's going to win the day on why our proposal will win, and 83 other proposals from the from across the country are not going to win. Yes, okay. sir. Um, I have just about to say this, Michael. I first met you with one of Terry County nominees that was one of the nominees that was interested in the color of the nominees. What I learned from that time about that when I got to the T board, our friend Tesla, what I learned from that day was we find our cars specific for the applicants who got the money from us. And so I just thank you for your work as an expertise, your professionalism. And whatever that push we've always had to have, we've always had a plan B. So I think yeah, I, it, it, that. I don't think it's every time we won, but Shannon, you won last time on your project in Dallas. I don't know, Jeff, you're about 60% or 50%. We, we are, okay. we're, 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 doing, we're very good at what we do. Um, but we don't want to tell people we're very good at what we do. Okay. Because it's not our vision that's important, it's your vision. Yes, sir. Okay. My name is Jerry Barton. I'm a in office in 1972 on East Lancaster. They're opening and stay here for quite a while since then. Uh, I don't, I really appreciate what the comment has done for us and done for the city. But there's a couple of people in this room that this wouldn't be happening if they hadn't been involved in it. It's the East Florida Business Association. Don Warren and Wanda Cotton, they have driven toward this goal. Thank you for sharing it and taking it over. Don and Wanda, uh, I don't like going to rig and cutting and stuff, but I think they're good for policy officials. I, I had the reputation of building three bridges. Uh, Overdrive, drive bypass channel. I was asked to go to the first company, and I thought maybe they were going to like tar and feather me at that particular event. And I saw Don and Walker there. They're, they're so nice as they always are. And uh, I told them, please get me slotted in the spring and summer. We're bringing, we're bringing the band, we're putting the band back together. We're going back to Lancaster that day. <laughs> And I think you're absolutely right. If it wasn't for Don and Juan, I wouldn't have the confidence and the passion to be as aggressive today as I would ordinarily be in, a, in an audience that we didn't know very well. One more question, and then I'm sure Michael will be here for a few minutes. Uh, Dan, I'm just curious how big of an ornament you think the uh, technology piece that you're talking about, the, the broadband access is. That's very innovative. Uh, yeah, I'm really mad at myself. I didn't come up with it earlier, to be honest with you. Uh, Flint's team with Tom was toying around with this particular idea. And then I dawned on me, wait a minute. I, 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 I postponed an item at the RTC, maybe more time to think it through. And then I sat through and said, you know, darn it, 
He works us for a year there. It's not just an equity issue. I know you grew up in the But it's not just an equity issue. It's actually a, it's a transportation problem. And we're the first in the country to make that claim. The division office doesn't know what to do with us. And uh, we, we have this, we have this in our application. We have job housing balance in our application. We have uh, new, uh, new construction. Uh, <laughs> We have new multitasking. Uh, <laughs> as uh, as you saw, yeah, we have new construction technology. I want to get I want to get people of color as construction managers. So there's new technology that I want to use and eventually introduce it maybe to textile projects where everything is taking a picture and geo coded. So those compression tests or those swap tests are actually photographed, logged, and uh, it eliminates 80% of the post. Most contract claims because everything is documented as you go. So those are the type of things we're bringing. The more layers you put in, the greater chance you have to win. You are getting what we call it's the first totally, totally designed bottom up safe screen. That's what we're going to pitch to the grassroots effort. And there may be 80 design elements we can't think of today, but this is the next generation safe screen illumination. Made this speed, whatever it may be. Well, there's lots of layers of technology we should expect to be doing. Thank you so much, Michael. It's now time for your prize. Let me tell you what he's saying. I, I've been in the Europe Planning Commission for a number of years. I've seen so many projects, I get goosebumps when I was in the Planning Commission. So, uh, join me to help give away some door prizes. The first two are going to be $25 gift cards for the Mexican Inn. Compliments are Mexican Inn. 244 3480. 3480. All right. Thanks, Lexi. And another one. And then the three, four, four, three. Three, four, four, three. We, we won. We're not, we can't, we can't yeah. take your prize. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Though. <laughs> three, four, five, two. Oh, okay. All right, Don, what's next? Compliments of Bill Swinson, a wonderful red wine. I've had this, it's out of his private collection. We're happy to report Michael Morris won the red wine. <laughs> <laughs> 3472. All right. Compliments of Angela Baker are. Tireless treasurer of the South Side Bank, another beautiful bottle of Cabernet. Three, four, four, four. All right. Compliments <laughs> of Don and Wanda. We love nuts. We, we, that's our favorite go to snack. We have two. Don, no, I don't think. <laughs> Three, four, seven, zero. I guess I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Three, four, seven, seven. All right. What's <laughs> up, <laughs> What a happy group. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I made a mistake. Uh, this should have been the first door prize. A $50 gift card for Cars for Kids. Thank you so much.
Michael Morris. <laughs> Three, four, four, one. Thank <laughs> you. 